Good morning. Can everybody hear me okay with a mask on? Okay. <laughs> okay. I am Carissa Moore. I am the treasurer of the Board of Trustees here at MVUC, and I have been voluntold to do this morning's announcements. So the Committee on Shared Ministry is con currently conducting an online survey in order to gather information for their shared ministry evaluation as required in Article 6, Section D1F of our bylaws. It's only seven questions, but they are short answer slash essay questions. So keep that in mind when you go to have time to fill it out. Um, please try to complete it as soon as possible. And the link is in the weekly announcements email. Uh, we are doing adopt a family this year. Uh, check out the RE table back by the door, back where Robert is, uh, where we have info about our adoptive family through the Inland Valley Hope Partners. The family has three special needs children and both parents are currently out of work. Uh, if you have the time, please pick up a tag so we can help this family have a Merry Christmas. Gifts must be brought back to MVUC by next Sunday, December 4th, wrapped with the information from the tag on it. The Board of Trustees and the Leadership Development Committee invite you to attend an informational meeting on Sunday, December 4th, right after service. The Leadership Development Committee will present a series of steps that have been explored in order to change our organizational structure into a possible configuration that is a better fit for our size and identity as we seek stability and growth. And then mark your calendars. Due to upcoming holidays, Gathering around grief will be permanently moved to the third Wednesday of each month. Next gathering will be December 21st. And then on January 22nd, 2023, will be our mid-year congregational meeting. This will include the mid-year budget review, a vote on continuing the reorganization process, and we also hope to present a motion for our leadership to move forward with removing the block wall and incorporating our undeveloped lots into our campus. But that also depends on the city and we will have more information on that as it gets closer. Thank you. I'm now turning it over to Don. Good morning, everybody. Come on, I can't hear you. Good morning, everybody. There you go. Uh, so we start by sounding our bell, our bowl. We sound the bowl three times. Once for those who came before. Once for those of us here and now. And once for those who will come. Today's opening words are number 423 in your hymnal if you've got one in your hand comes from Psalm. There we go. It is a joy to give thanks to the Eternal, to sing thy praise, O thou most high, to proclaim thy goodness in the morning to the sweet music of the lyre. I sing for joy at all that thou hast done. <laughs> This time I ask Reverend Maggie to come up and light our chops. <laughs> we gather this hour as people of faith with joys and sorrows, gifts and needs. We light this beacon of hope, sign of our quest for truth and meaning in celebration of the life we share together. And now, if we will rise as we are willing and able. We shall sing our favorite, Spirit of Life, number one, two, three. It's also in the very back of your hymnal. I'm getting a message. Did I miss something? Oh, we need to speak our covenant. I'm awful at this. Jarius. I'm new. I'm, I'm not good at this. There we go. Let's all speak our covenant together. Ready? Love is the doctrine of this congregation. The quest of truth is its sacrament, and service is its prayer. 
to dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge and freedom, to serve the world in fellowship, to the end that all souls shall grow in harmony with the divine. Thus do we covenant with each other. Amen. exploration did I get that right yeah comes up and he's gonna he's going to bring up a concept kids if you would be so kind as to come up to the front row I'm gonna have you guys get, come up to the microphone after Robert talks so I was asked to define for the children what the word gratitude means um, if you don't know <coughs> Gratitude just means having an attitude of thankfulness for that which we receive and that which is already out there in the world. So just being thankful for um, just being able to exist in the world as we are and having access to the wonderful things that we have access to and all the care that we receive from our families and the gifts. So we're going to ask each of the children to come up and st should they step up to the... Oh, right here. Perfect. So if the children could step up and share something that they're grateful uh -huh. for, something that they feel gratitude for having in their lives, we would appreciate it. And then um, we'll be sung out to our classes. So, uh, Max, go ahead. Come on, Max. You go first. Show them how it's done. Speak into the microphone. Into the microphone. Okay. Grateful. I'd say that I'm grateful for... I'm just... I don't know, my life in general. <laughs> um, I'm grateful for my family because, like, sometimes when I'm struggling with my homework and stuff, they could help me. Nice. I don't see my child in here. Any other kids want to come up and say what they're grateful for? I saw a few other kids out there. They don't... Last call. Come on up. Okay. Nope. Well, okay. if you don't want to come up, let's go ahead and have Jarius put our song up on the screen. That's right. We're going to do And Max, if you want to grab the chalice and the children can follow me out to class. to make sure the kids had an understanding of what we're going to do after this offertory. Um, today's offertory words come from our hymnal. They were written by Ellen Johnson Fay. It's number 675 if you want to look it up. And it, it reads, the offering is a sacrament of the free church. It is supported by the voluntary generosity of all who join with us. The offering will now be given and received 
in a grateful appreciation of our shared hopes and values. And I cannot stress enough how important it is now that our building is falling apart around us <laughs> to dig down deep. So. so what I will ask is after you put your money in the basket, let's line up. And we're, as adults, going to do what I just put the kids through. We're going to each get up here, take a minute, and tell, tell everybody something we're grateful for. This week, right about now, is normally when we do our sharing of joys and concerns. Now, as you notice, I haven't talked about our little yellow cards up front. What I had envisioned today is we come up and let's each take a minute at the microphone and talk about something we're grateful for. Even if it's a, even if it's a sorrow, we still have, there's still gratitude to be found, even in the depths of that. So who wants to start? Do I got to kick it off? Reverend Ellen, come on up. So everybody who feels moved, let's line up here towards the front so we can do this. And you can keep your mask on, just put your, and you, you can get real close to the microphone. I love being a greeter because, <laughs> like today, this wonderful lady, Angelica, showed up. She helped to take care of my husband, Nick, at the memory care unit at, in Claremont. So she's very special in my life, and it's so good to see you. Alas, now she has moved to North Carolina, but the good news is she's going to the same Unitarian Church in Winston-Salem where my daughter is so active. So <laughs> wonderful people that come through that door. I'm so grateful. Amen. Okay, this will probably sound trite. Right on the microphone. Okay. Swallow the mic. Got it. Okay. So this will probably sound trite, but I think the thing I am most grateful for is my relationship with my husband. Oh, Lord. <laughs> it's misplaced, I promise you. <laughs> mm. My goodness. Besides a wonderful gathering, I'm grateful that... Our son Josh is doing okay after being in an automobile accident on Monday and needing facial reconstruction surgery. But the universe seems to be aligning, so we're good. Good. Blessed. I'm grateful for lots of things, but. I think what struck me just a moment ago, listening to Lily, is uh, I'm grateful for the beautiful music that we get to listen to every week. Thank you, Lily. I'm grateful that my son Eric has finished his education and is settled in a good administrative job. Awesome. My daughter Lauren is back in college and we, had, we were able to replace our old car with a new plug-in hybrid, and we just paid our house off. Oh, yes. Good morning. I'm grateful that our district has a camp, the Camp de Beneville Pines. Uh, Shirley and I were up there uh, Wednesday through yesterday, and she's uh, taken her grandchildren and a daughter around today for a craft fair over in Norco. Uh, there was just enough snow on the ground to make it picturesque, but not enough to be a nuisance. <laughs> and uh, the weather was beautiful, no rain and mostly sunshine and crisp. Uh, the camp has gotten better and better and better as uh, years have gone by. And if you haven't been up there, I would suggest keep an eye on their calendar, and if something interests you, sign up and go. It's not very far away. I am just very super happy to be here and not to be living in Texas anymore. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I know that one. We're grateful you live here, too. <laughs> And I just wanted to ask everybody, because I went by and I asked Jeannie, would you like me to bring one up for you? And she said, everybody in this room, so let's just take like a minute 
And just like look around at this room. Look at the people here. These are our people. This is a beautiful day to offer gratitude for our community. And that's what I'm most thankful for too. Well, now I'm just piggybacking on that. I'm grateful for my friends because friends are the family you choose. Go ahead, Bob. <laughs> this morning, uh, I was uh, at, the, at the fence with the neighbor, you know, doing a neighbor talk, and I was uh, informed that my great neighbor is, they're moving away. Oh, no. and it's heartbreak for me because they're such wonderful people. It gives me a model of that. How, what, how to be a neighbor, you know, how to be a good neighbor. I just, it's so obvious. Um, and anyway, I'm just grateful that they were there for the amount of time they were there. And uh, uh, I'm grateful that this, they won't be completely out until uh, springtime. But uh, um, I'm grateful for their, their inspiration. Thank you. Here comes Catherine. Let's make space for Catherine too. Personally, I'm thankful for, Ka for Catherine Rowley here, everybody. Um, I was just thinking that I'm, I'm actually grateful for, for life in general, not just my life, but all the life, all the messiness and the, every experience and all the living things and even the unliving things. And I'm just grateful for the opportunity that I have as I'm going along wake up every morning and the chance to interact and every day be a better and better person. And sad, I'm even grateful for the sadness because we wouldn't have the happiness without them and just for the opportunity to live it better every day. And of course, I love you all. <laughs> <laughs> and then I feel like I should probably say something, right? I'm pretty quiet about externalizing my gratitude, which is something I should work on. Um, at its core, though, I'm grateful for every one of you and how the sum is greater than the parts. When we come together as a community, something really special happens, and it's, it's really quite inspiring. So I'm truly grateful that we have a community together like this. So on that note, <laughs> let's, hope, let's rise as we are willing and able. I know everybody just took a walk, but let's go to 322 for another hymn we don't know that good. But I found these in here, and I was, and thank you again to Kat. Catherine set aside like an hour and a half this week to help me put this together, so thank you again, Catherine. Um, but I found this great hymn. I'm very, I'm very into this one, so. Thanks be for these.
So when we first had the worship committee meeting on what are we going to do for gratitude, uh, the thought of our guest speaker today came to mind immediately. Kyle Hollingsworth is a graphic artist, visual artist, and, a fr and I'm, I'm truly glad to call her a friend. She started a daily gratitude posting, uh, she'll tell you when, it's been years. And I wanted to invite her here today for our gratitude service to talk about the project and what she's gotten out of it and all that. So for here, I turn it over to Kyle. Thank you for having me. I'm very honored to be here with you. I'm grateful for this time and for the invitation, Donald. Thank you very much. Um, gratitude is a topic I really love talking about because it's played a huge role in my life. And as Don mentioned, I do have a daily practice and today is day 2,418 of my daily gratitude practice that I began over six and a half years ago. I started it in the six months leading up to my 50th birthday. <clears throat> um, and I'll tell you why, because I felt like reaching 50 and then every year since then has been such an incredible milestone in my own life because I've been on this trajectory of healing. And um, let me go back and say, so a little bit about me other than what Don shared is that I am a survivor of multiple traumas um, uh, spanning decades, including my mother's suicide when I was eight years old, abuse by various family members, the imprisonment of my father when I was in high school and his eventual death from drugs and alcohol, um, the loss of my baby and late-term pregnancy, and there are more, but there's no point in listing them all. I just want to give you a little bit of an idea because I really want to call attention to the, my gratitude practice. And when I speak about it, it's not um, some saccharine hallmark you know, meme about be grateful all the time. Um, life is tough. It's challenging. And mine has been specifically and, and generally very uh, challenging. Um, and the reason I can sit here and talk about it so easily is my gratitude practice, quite frankly. Um, I want to let all of this that I have moved through and experienced and survived to help me be a light for other people. And the way that I can do that is focusing on my own healing, um, choosing everything, the good, the bad, the indifferent, and, and accepting everything, um, and finding gratitude more often um, than focusing on the dark. So... About 11 years ago, I began doing some healing work on my own trauma, and this whole gratitude practice was, was another piece that I could bring in. And I thought I would do it for six months, and I'd be like, okay, I did that. That was great. Um, but it had such a profound impact on me and others who follow me, because this is something that I post every day. Um, and I was getting notes and messages and all this feedback, and I thought, okay, well, I can keep doing this. And so I don't know how long I'll do it, but again, it's been over six and a half years, and I'd, I'm not anywhere near ready to stop. <laughs> um, and so the thing I want to say about it is I, I know that for myself and I'm, I've, I've witnessed it in, in your expressions of gratitude, that gratitude is this beautiful anchor that we can go back to, that we can lean into um, no matter what's happening, you know, no matter what darkness might be it, it, it present to us, because there's always some degree of it. We're human beings. We're going to have pain, and we're going to have challenges. Um, but even in the darkest of times, I just have this bone deep commitment, you know, to finding gratitude every day, no matter what. And I'm constantly course correcting myself. You know, it's not always easy. And I experience loss and grief and disappointment even now, even recently. Um, even uh, next month, three years ago, will be the anniversary of uh, my being attacked by our dog. Who You can't probably see the scar, but tore off part of my mouth and that was a very, very, very dark time for me. But because I've been practicing this and because I know its power, I remember saying to my husband when I was bandaged and just in incredible pain, I said, I don't know what the gift is in this, but I know that there is one and I'm going to stick around to find out, like I'm going to get through this. And um, I've, I've received many gifts from it. Um, and so there's always something in there. And I think it's my willingness to choose the light and to look for the light, no matter what, it's just, it saved me. It's honestly just kept me going. And, you know, at the bottom of everything, the truth, my real truth is just the blessings in my life. It's not the bad things that's happened to me. That's not who I am. And it's not what I want to focus on. I do talk about it because I think it's important to share our stories, 
And as the quote I read earlier um, about uttering the words, it's, it's, it's not just about saying it. You know, I can go online, I can say it to you, but I have to live it. <clears throat> How do I do that? One way I do that is I visualize and I create a sensation. I create the feelings in my body. And I'd love to lead you all in a very quick exercise if you're willing to participate. Um, if you would all just close your eyes for a moment and listen to my voice. And let's all take one collective deep breath together. Breathe in. Okay, now while you have your eyes closed, call to your mind one simple thing that you're thankful for. It might've been a cup of hot coffee this morning. It might be the way the air feels on your skin. It might be a smile you saw when you arrived at church today. How does that make you feel? Now bring something to mind that's bigger. Bring something that you're grateful for that's big, like the health of your family, a beautiful memory that you return to, your friendships, this congregation, perhaps a loved one who's made it through an illness. Now feel into that. What does it feel like to sit wholly in your gratitude? Notice the way that your heart swells and how your body feels. Now choose to create a smile on your face if you don't already have one. Breathe into that smile. Open your eyes. Take a moment to look around the community and share this feeling without words. And this is what I do each and every day. Before I write it out, I feel it out. I take the time to call to mind whatever it is that I can be grateful for. And sometimes it's, you know, it's my dog. Sometimes it's a big project that I got. Sometimes it's just that I woke up today and I'm alive. More often than not, that's really at the core of it. And in closing, I just want to say, I'm like to invite you even more than you are today, but going forward to explore bringing gratitude practice into your life. It might be saying it out loud. It might be writing it down. It might just be sitting quietly with your own thoughts and feeling into gratitude. You know, our brains actually, a brain science comment I've, I've learned, um, our brains actually don't know how to distinguish a real memory from a created one, a real feeling from a generated feeling. And so if you can create and generate the feeling inside of yourself of truly feeling grateful for everything, even things you've not received yet, and just trust that they're here. I really believe it changes lives in the most beautiful and profound ways. And it certainly has mine. And I'm grateful for you all. And I appreciate being able to share this with you. Um, I think I'll be available uh, af after for questions. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, Carol. And thank you for coming on forgetting about doing our pastoral prayer and meditation. Thank you for covering me on that. What was that? You did a much better job with the meditation than I ever would have. Oh, goodness. <laughs> thank you. I'm sorry. We're a little out of order here. I do. I did bring a responsive reading I found when I was putting this together. Jerry, if we could pull that up. I would like to do this together. And I'm not saying we got to do it every week, but we're particularly in a thankful mood. And I would like to thank our folks at home. So if we could read this all together, uh, your response line is the same every time you give thanks for their online presence. So after each line, that is your line, ready? For those who moved away, who are now able to join us, give thanks, thanks for your online presence. For those who have mobility challenges, who are now able to join us, we give thanks for their online presence. For those families who are having a rough morning, who are still able to join us. We give thanks for their online presence. For those who are contagious or immunocompromised, who are still able to join us. We give thanks for their online presence. For those curious but shy seekers who want to learn about us. We give thanks for their online presence. For those sibling congregations whose worship team needs a break, now able to visit us. We give thanks for their online presence. And for the guest preachers who give our worship team a break. We give thanks for their online presence. 
I, I especially thank you, Kyle. <laughs> thank you. Um, so, yeah, Kyle covered me on the on the him, on the meditation, so I'm so glad. So, why don't we open our teal hymnal to a personal favorite, Blue Boat Home, number ten sixty four. <laughs> I want to leave you with this benediction, which is also our centering thought from John F. Kennedy. As we express our gratitude, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them. Let's extinguish our chalice. Who wants to do it? You want to come do it, dear? Or she's close. Go. <laughs> Number 679 in our gray hymnal, because I'm very by the book, right? Be ye lamps unto yourselves. Be your own confidence. Hold to the truth within yourselves as to the only lamp was the Buddha. So please, we're going to have one more piece from Lily. If you all would like to pick Kyle's brain, she's going to hang out for the Zoom question and answer afterwards. And thank you so much for your time and attention and, and community this morning.